All right, now we've got verse 12 and 13 on the same slide. Look at that. Okay. So who would like to read verse 12? Okay, I'll volunteer. Great. Vatotei ha'aretz deshe eshev 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 matzria tera leminhu leminehu the eight. Yoshe Peri. Oh, say. Ashe. Oh, say. Peri. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, say. Yes. Oh, say. Peri. Ashe. Var o. Zar o. Zar o. Vo. Leminehu. Vayar. Elohim. Kito. Great. Thank you. Very good. Very good. Nice to hear that nice reading. All right, so verse 12, Vatotse Ha'aret. So who recognizes what is this first verb? Oh, let me turn my screen brightness up. What is the root of this first verb? From Yatsa. And the earth. Yes, yes. Yatsa. Yatsa. The earth. Yeah, that's right, guys. Tenda. Very good, very good. So the root is Yatsa. Yatsa. What's Yatsa mean? The basic meaning of Yatsa? To come out or go out. That's right. That's right. That's right. Go out, right? This is where the Exodus comes from, right? In Hebrew, the Exodus from Egypt, well, I'm going to have to hit mute all because there's some background noise, but feel free to unmute your individual microphones as you want to speak because I hear background chatter. So the Exodus from Egypt is called the Yetziat Mitzrayim. The going out of Egypt, Yetziat, that's right. So Exodus in Hebrew, the Exodus is the Yetziat, or rather the Yetziah, Yetziah. And then we say Yetziat Mitzrayim, the Exodus of Egypt. So what is the binyan of this verb? What is our verbal form? He yeah, it's very good, he feel, he feel. So he's he feel. similar to, similar to that same. Yeah. Uh, that's right. That's yeah. right. There it is. There's yep. See the, There's the exactly the Sari, right? Our yod that was up here went down, and you lengthen that chirik into a Sari. Yep. And oftentimes this is a sign of just of force again, right? Although in this case it's not. So vatotse haaretz. So the subject is haaretz, right? So, so what does this mean? Vatotse haaretz. Actually, let's do the whole unit. Deshe esif. Let the earth bring forth, or let something go out from. The well, earth. it's it's not really let anymore. In this case, it's the right. Okay. So this is in the earth. So this is the in the earth. Yeah, actually, let me back up just for a second. Uh, is it perfect or imperfect? The form here, guys. This vatotse, the totse. Uh it's perfect. Right. Imperfect. imperfect. Right, 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 right. Imperfect. Right. So imperfect first, right, and then when we put the valve in front, what happens? But Perfect. perfect. No. Vav now it's exactly. Vav conversive makes it perfect. Okay. So, um, okay. So the earth brought yes. the green things Very good. and the herbs. Yes. So then, or and, the earth brought forth Desha <laughs> Esif, right? All kinds of green foliage, right? Green plants. And then we have an expansion. What kind of green plants? Mazria Zera. Leminehu. Okay, what's that part mean? Seed bearing, seed bearing plant. Yeah, yeah, or yeah, you could say seed bearing, right? Literally causing <laughs> seeds to seed. <laughs> leminehu. What's the leminehu? According to its kind. Very, very good. So, so the lamed is like belonging to, literally belonging to, right? That's the lamed of of ownership, belonging. Oops, sorry. Oh, I got disconnected. Do you see my screen still? Okay, yes. good, 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 good. Yes. Good. <laughs> it said disconnected. Okay. Belonging. So belonging, and then the who, what's the who at the end? What is that who? It. 
Good. It, it, right? It. Yeah, pronominal suffix. Yeah, okay. And in the mean, we just had it right. Okay, good. The eights or say pari. Okay. What's that? The eights or say pari. Fruit bearing. Yeah, a tree. Literally, a, and literally, a, a tree. That makes yeah, fruit. Yeah, exactly. A, that makes exactly. Fruit. A tree that makes fruit. Exactly. Oh, it looks like my notes are out of order. Sorry. Hold on. Let's, uh, come on. All right. So this one over here, I have a comment on this. So according to Genesis Rabbah, the Midrash, all trees speak with one another. All trees speak with other creatures. All trees were created for the delight of other creatures. Just kind of a little interesting uh, thing there from Genesis Rabbah. And here's the source I got from. So Asher Zao. Yeah, it's, oh, it's, okay. uh, it's animating the trees. It's animating the trees. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Asher. Rab, yes. Also in Psalm 96. Then all trees the of, trees of the wood rejoice. Very good. And all the trees of the wood rejoice. Yes. Yeah. We'll sing for joy. We'll sing yes. For joy. Yes. yes. And also we have the trees of the Ya'ar. That's of the forest. They will clap their hands. Right. And, right. We have. So yeah. yeah very nice. Yeah, yes. probably these are the verses that helped influence the Midrash, right? The Midrash Rabbah. Yeah, very nice connection there, though. Good. Asher? Which, Good. Zao Vo. Seed in it. Right? More literally? It's, it's seed. seed. Yeah, it's seed in it. Good, good, good. It's seed in it. Good. Okay, and students, I want more of you to speak up, please. Um, now, this is not to chide you, but re remember, this is what I meant by let's not push forward into additional grammar until you can show me that you have the grammar that we have already. Yeah, we want to. Th this is. Th there was a study from Berlitz Language Centers in, uh, and uh, I used to have a Vietnamese tutor from them, and they you know, they're pretty well known in the states. I don't know if you guys know them here, but Berlitz is famous for teaching business professionals languages and stuff like that uh, at a quick pace, right? And they they did a study where they proved that it's better if you have a certain amount of time to focus on the fundamentals of the language, like the basics and master those basic building blocks than to jump forward and get all the you know advanced stuff or whatever if you're not already mastering the basics, right? So, and I really... I'm speaking this to you from my heart, from my own learning, okay? You can do it if you like, but I'm just saying I do not recommend going forward with the grammar at a, a, at a quick clip because I did this with Greek. This was my folly in Greek. Over the years, I kept – I would get excited about it. See, I'm kind of a grammar junkie. I like it, right? <laughs> and I, I, would, I would push forward through with, uh, with the Greek grammar, and then I had to do it all over again later, right? Finally, the fourth time it stuck, right? But I just kept going through again because I wasn't immersing myself in the language. I wasn't activating that really where you make it your own. Once you read a verse in Hebrew and you understand it, every single word and every single grammatical concept in that verse, you own it now. It's yours. It's yours. You own it. But if you just jump forward through trying to get, you know, these grammatical principles and stuff or whatever, but you haven't really immersed, you haven't really locked down all the stuff, then it's going to be problematic because grammar is very closely related to mathematics. With mathematics, we need the strong foundation before we can go on. To try to attempt calculus without mastering algebra is foolhardy and useless. You cannot possibly understand calculus. And, and again, I'm sharing this. I used to tutor calculus one through four in college, right? So, you know, I'm telling you, this is exactly like grammar. If, if you don't have algebra, you will never get calculus. But when you master algebra, then there's really not that much that's amazing from calculus. It's just kind of the next logical progression. And it's the same with the grammar. You need to really strengthen your foundations. Okay, guys? So for those of you who are being silent, don't be shy. We're all friends here. Please speak up. Try to chime in. I want to see that you understand what's going on. Okay? I want to see that you have these grammatical concepts. And then we will introduce some more, some more overt grammar. Okay? But you really need to hammer these things down. Okay. So, zaro vo. His seed in it, literally, is what it's saying, right? And again, Laminehu, belonging to his mean, his species. Right? Who are pronominal suffixes, right? Okay. 
All right. Vayal Elohim Kitov. What's that mean? Then God saw. Then God saw. God saw. And God saw. Okay, and what? And God saw. Yeah, yeah. good. And what did he see? Kitov. Was good. Yeah, it was good. Was, was good. 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 And notice we have to insert English was here, right? The text doesn't say it, right? Vaya Elohim, and God saw, literally, that good, right? That's what it says. Oops, sorry. Go back, go back, go back. Yep, go back. Go back. Okay, there we are. So I have a common comment here from Rabbi Kimchi. By the way, you might know him as Radak. He's called two different things. Kimchi Radak. It's just an acronym for his name. Even Rabbi. Yes. Yes. I have read about Rabbi David Kimchi. Yes. He, yes. He his, his acronym is Radak. That's right. The Radak. Yeah. Somebody said that he was Korean. Somebody said it's Korean. No, not Korean. <laughs> you say kimchi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said that, that, that is Hebrew. That is a Jew. Right, right. Not, not Korean. Right, it's a chet. It's a chet. <laughs> not kimchi, but kimchi. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah>. Nice. <laughs> so, the David kimchi, right? So, so even plants, he says, that are not good to eat or drink may be good for healing, right? So so he's kind of making his point that just because it's not good to look at or not good to eat, is kind of an obvious observation, but those are good to have sometimes. Okay, verse 13. Somebody read verse 13 for me. So Rabbi, so what is that translation for Kitov? That was good? Yeah, that it was good is usually what okay. we would say, right? That it yeah. Was good. Okay. Sure. And the was... I will read. We know. Okay, good. Go, go. Read, read. Oh, first say something. Okay. Vaihi Ereb. Vaihi Ereb. Vaihi Boker Yom Shelishi. Great. Great. Thank you, Elizabeth. Good job. Okay. Perfect. Vaihi Erev. Vaihi Erev. So, what, everybody, what's Vaihi Erev mean? And he will. Well, that would just be Yehi. So there was evening. Yes, yes. So was, there was evening. Was, yeah, I like that. It was and, evening. And there was. And there was evening. Yes. Pala. And there and was, was. There was evening. Good. So. And there was. So evening. and there was evening, or so was so evening. was evening. Vaihi Volker, and it was Volker. What's Volker? I know Tom knows Volca. Day, not not day, morning. not day. Morning, yeah, morning, morning, morning. Right. morning. Right. What's a what's a what's yeah. an Israeli phrase morning. we use for Volca? Tom, use it in a phrase. Face. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Volca <laughs> Tov. Yeah. Good. Good. Very good. Volca yes. Tov. Good morning. Rabbi. Yes. Rabbi, I have. I have noticed that uh, the first day that mentioned is evening first and then morning. Yes. But in the Korean, morning and evening. I, I didn't hear the second part of your phrase. The first thing mentioned is evening, but in the what? Yes. What's the last part you said? Morning. The first day is evening and then morning. Yes. Yeah, this is actually, I'm going to hit mute all because there's some street noise going on. Feel free to unmute if you want to talk, okay? You're all allowed to talk. So, that's right. This is actually a very interesting argument against those who would have a problem with the age of the earth or something like this, right? Look, we radiocarbon dated such and such. Although, actually, this age, you don't use radiocarbon. You use another kind of process. But they'll say, look, the earth is, you know, so old. How can it be that the Bible says it's only, you know, or it seems like 6,000 years or so in the Bible? Well, the very first day is clearly a long day because as, as you're pointing out, as Tom's pointing out, in our tradition, in Jewish tradition, the day starts at night, right? That's why the Sabbath starts Friday night. Friday, the sixth day, Yom HaShishi, the sun goes down, and now it's Sabbath already. It's already the next day because... 6.30 six, six in the evening, Rabbi. Right. 6.30 right, in the right, evening. Right, right. It's already. It's yeah. already, right. And so so this is actually the, the justification for this understanding in Jewish halacha. Because, first there's evening, 
First, there's darkness. And this word, Eviv, it has kind of a connotation of darkness in it, right? Like the word for raven, it comes from the same root. The blackbird, the raven, it's also from this word, right? And so, so you know, we, we have, uh, you know, some say even Arab, the Arabs, right? Because they were darker than the Jews, so we call them the Arab, right? The Arabim, right? The Arabs, the darker ones, right? Like that. And so, because of this, uh, the very first day could be trillions of years old, really. Because you start with darkness. You start with nothingness. Who, who knows? And especially in the context where we pointed out, in a beginning, God is creating, doing all these things. So we, start, it, 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 we could have numerous creation accounts, right? And as the Midrash points out, <coughs> excuse me, as the Midrash points out, Hashem, he, he began creating and destroying worlds until he was pleased with one of them, creating and he kept on creating and destroying, creating and destroying. That's Midrash Rabbah gives this account about the creation until he was pleased with the result. And so the very first day, who knows how long that day is? It is not a 24-hour day. Just as you're pointing out, first, it's darkness. For, and that could be who knows how long. So you can have matter even that's existing in that whole time period, right? It could be it could be billions of years. The matter, who knows? And then Hashem does something with it, right? Like we pointed out, bara doesn't mean to create ex nihilo to create from nothing. It just means create, and it's only used by God. That word bara is only used by God in the Bible. Nobody else baras, just Hashem. And then the next part of that day again, it's not twelve hours, twelve hours yet, okay? Because if you if you think about it, the very first day He makes light. But he hasn't made the sun yet, right? He didn't make the stars, etc. All that stuff. So, so here we are, of course, on the third day. So, Vahi Volker. This one we do. Already, we already have a light cycle, right? So, and it was evening, and it was morning. Yom Shelishi. What's Yom Shelishi mean? Day three. Third, third day. Third day. Right. Third day. So our, our noun third day, Yabai, third good. Day. So our noun is Yom and our adjective is Shelishi, third. And then you see the little pay marker? This isn't a Torah scroll to tell us that there needs to be this space. You see the space here? Here's a picture from the Leningrad Codex, right? So it's tell so here you see seen the text by Hivoke Yom Shelishi, right? You see it right there? Elohim Kitov, Vahi Elev, Vahi Vokel, Yom Shelishi. And then we have our Shof Pasuk marker, that's this one. And then there's a big white space, right? So that's what that Pe means, there's a big white space. We're, set, we're about to enter into a new context here. Okay? Any questions on this one? Rabbi. Yes. Rabbi. Yes. Yom, yom, is, uh, yom is masculine form. Yes. Yes. All right, and I just have a comment here from the Talmud I wanted to share with you guys. So this is from the Talmud, Tractate Chulin, page 60. And when you see the A, that means the first side of the daf. We call it a daf. That's Aramaic. It means a page. And B means it's on the back side. So if you, any of you get into looking for stuff in the Talmud or whatever, that's what it means when you see a reference. A means the first side of the page. B means the back side of the page, right? So when the Holy One, blessed be He, said... Let the earth put forth grass, herb yielding seed, and fruit tree bearing fruit after its kind. The grasses drew on a uh, drew an a fortiori inference with regard to themselves. They reasoned, if the Holy One, blessed be He, wishes the mixing of species, why did He say after its kind? Right, mm. laminehu, with regard to the trees. And furthermore, let us draw an a fortiori inference. If with regard to trees, which do not naturally grow mixed, as they are large and distinct from one another, the Holy One, blessed be He, said, after its kind. All the more so with regard to us, since grass naturally grows mixed. Immediately, every kind of grass emerged after its kind, as it is stated, and the earth brought forth grass, that's the deshe, right? I said oftentimes this is translated grass. Herb yielding seed after its kind. So this is just more support for the idea that God is starting processes. He's starting processes with the, with the earth. And he's telling the earth, he's imbuing the earth with, with the potential 
to bring forth all these various types of species. He gives the command to get it started. He sets the framework and he says, go. Right? So as we saw in yesterday's Josh, we discussed the concept that there are, I'm sorry, just check this in background noise. Sha! He expressed the concept that there are, uh, um, uh, that there are derivative forces, toledot, right? The toledot, that the earth is able to do derivative actions in the creation following God's command. So, all right, so that's support from the Talmud on that concept. And, and that also is an argument against evolution. Yes, yes, exactly. And actually supporting the emerging science of intelligent design, right? Which uh, is, is so much amazing. There's so much amazing evidence that there's a creator. Look, uh, you guys know I used to be a, um, a computer programmer, right? I was a computer programmer for a while. And in software, software engineers, actually this is Dr. Stephen Myers. He mentioned this. Uh, one, of the, one of the programmers that was working for him at the Discovery Institute, he said to him when he was reading through some of the uh, DNA research that Dr. Myers was doing, and he said, he said, this is code. This is programming language, right? And a programmer sees this immediately with DNA. DNA is absolutely a programming language. It's amazing. The double helix for the humans and anyway, various other species, the way the proteins sync up, it is digital information inside of life. There could not be better evidence that a creator made everything than putting information that is inside of the organism. Literal information. It's coded information and various types of cells have decoders where they can decode dna so the information is encoded and it's decoded like a complex computer system it's amazing and so don't let anybody bully you i Go watched ahead. it last night oh great i watched that last night as you said Beautiful, Dr. beautiful, beautiful. It's good, right? He's very interesting too. How he presents it, he does a good job presenting the information. I think. Yes. Yeah. And did you watch a debate, or was it just a presentation from him, like an interview? Not yet finished the interview. Uh -huh. Someone was interviewing. Okay, him. because he also debates famous evolutionists and just wipes the floor with them. About the DNA. <laughs> yes, great, 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 great. Yeah, very good stuff. And, you know, it's. The, I believe that understanding these things to some level is part of the fulfillment of the mitzvah. You shall love Hashem with all your mind, right? And so to love Him with all of your mind means we like to kind of take a look and see how these things work and to understand it in science. This is a great thing. And it, it also arms us with an answer, as the brother of the Mashiach says, to be always ready with an answer for the faith that is within you, right? We're, it's no longer, nobody can the world bully us and just say, oh, these dumb believers, they just reject science and reason. No, we're the ones with the reason. We're the ones with science on our side. It, it's just amazing. You really have to have your head in the sand to think that the evolution the way it's presented in the schools could have actually happened. This non-directed, random process, it's impossible. And again, Darwin had no clue that DNA existed. Had he known about DNA, he already had a doubt because of the Cambrian explosion, right? This kind of fossil record that's out there that shows many organisms coming onto the scene at once, right? And we found more evidence. It's now in China, it's in Canada. They have many, many discoveries where you find suddenly there's a whole bunch of new organisms, right? Which does not fit the evolutionary model. Nice, nice.